What's up guys? Hope you're having an awesome day. I know you've wondered where are all these sandbox time videos that we're supposed to be watching. Well, it's been winter here, so we haven't done too much. Um, and I figured today would be a good day to discuss one of the RC myths or conundrums is how do we get a servo like these ones here to move like they do in the hydraulic machines, like the excavators and loaders and dozers and everything. You know, today our servos are designed that when you move the stick, it moves in conjunction with the direction that it goes, but it goes right back to center. So you see, if I pull the stick all the way to one side, the servo moves. And if I move it back to the center, it goes back to center. But what if we go like this? just a touch and it stays I touch and it goes back to center but guess what the servo doesn't go back to center <gasps> everybody wants to know how to do it and I'm going to show you okay so we have this servo here I just have a servo horn on here just to show you that it moves but every time I move this stick I can move it slowly and it'll continue to move Right, so as long as I hold it in that position, the servo will move. And once it goes back to center, the servo will continue to stay in that spot. Now, there's something we have to do to make this happen, because it's not magic. I wish it was magic. I wish you could just buy a servo that did this, but you have to modify the servo. So we're gonna have to take the servo apart, and there's two things that we're gonna need to do. Number one, we're gonna have to mess with the potentiometer, right? So we're gonna have to cut the head off of it, like cutting the head off a dragon. We gotta cut it off and then we have to super glue it in position so that the servo doesn't know where it is at any point. So if I move the servo, it's gonna go and stay in that position until I tell it to go back. Now, what's the pros and cons of this? Well, the pros are this will feel just like the real thing in the real world, right? When you're driving a machine and you're doing the hydraulics, it'll stay in that position. The drawback, well, because the potentiometer's not there anymore, it's not gonna wanna stay and hold because I can try to force it, right? And now it'll stay at that new position. It doesn't go back like a regular servo, right? So if we put this other servo back and I move this, right? If I let go and I try to move this servo, it won't move because it's held in position by the potentiometer. So that's the drawback. This will only hold as much as it thinks it can and put a little bit of pressure and now it'll stay in that new position. So that's the drawback. There's the weight limitation that it's not gonna hold because there's no potentiometer to tell it where to stay. Whereas with this one, the potentiometer will always hold it. So if this is a 20 kilogram servo, it's gonna hold 20 kilograms in that position. If I put 20 kilograms here, this guy's just gonna go whoop, all the way and no real resistance. So trade off, this will hold a little bit of weight, but not a lot. Even though this could be a 20 kilogram servo as well, it just won't hold it. So let's go in and dive in and see what's going on inside here and how did we make those changes. All right, so let's take off the horn, servo horn here. And then we're gonna go over to the bottom of the servo, right? We've gotta take off these four screws. And once we take these four screws, we're gonna take the bottom of this guy off. So now let's take off these bottom four screws, okay? We wanna make sure we remember how this all goes together because it could be a bit of a mess trying to put it all back together if you don't remember. But let's take these guys off and then I'll show you the inside. All right, let's pull this apart. I'm gonna set this aside. Well, let's try this instead. Okay, so let's take the top off. So when we take the top of the screw off, the, the 
servo case, I should say, you're gonna see this little pin here, okay? This is an all metal servo. There's servos that are all plastic, but this little pin here stops this from doing 360 degrees. So if we wanna do 360 degree spinning servo, we're gonna to have to shave this thing off. Now in the plastic ones, you just cut the pin off, right, with a little razor knife or something here. We'll probably have to get like a little Dremel tool or something to shave this thing down so it doesn't limit that. So if you wanna do a 360 degree spinning servo, that's one of the things you're gonna to have to do, okay? So let's take this off and remember where they go, okay? Now, inside here, you'll see, it looks like a little keyway, okay? And right here, that's where the potentiometer goes and holds, so it knows that's the position. Well, what we've done here, okay? is I've cut the top of that potentiometer off, okay? It's just a little rectangle piece that sticks out about maybe an eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch. And what I've done is I've taken it off and I've super glued it in position, okay? So you don't really have to take this bottom piece off in, in uh, most cases, but I took it off so that I could <clears throat> get that potentiometer off and just cut the top piece off. Now, you wanna cut it off flush so that this okay you can see that little keyway there that's where the potentiometer would sit right inside that little rectangular piece and so anytime the servo moves the potentiometer knew exactly where it was well by cutting it off okay we've now glued it in position and one key thing to to make sure here is when you glue it in position, make sure it's glued where it's not gonna move because if it feels or has any resistance, your servo is gonna constantly make little adjustments um, to center itself or find that stopping position. So make sure when you glue this, just leave it like this. And I, the way I did it was I plugged my servo in to a servo tester, okay? You can get one just like this, plugged it in, made sure it was set to neutral and I monitored this while the glue set so it wouldn't move, okay? Because it's gonna wanna try to move if there's any slight motion, um, and that's gonna affect it. But anyways, once you've done this, you put the top back on, okay? And this just sits on top now and it spins, okay? But once you put this guy back, just make sure that they mesh, okay? Everything's all back together. Now it's tight. We'll put the cap back on and the bottom back on. And remember how you put it on because there's gonna be a hole for the servo wire, cable, wire, whatever you wanna call it. Put it all back together, okay? So put this all back together and then there you go. You have yourself a 360 degree turning servo if you want to be 360 degrees. Again, remember cutting that little piece off or if you wanna keep the, the movement limited, don't cut that little tab off the, the top of this um, gear on the, the, the servo. So don't cut that little tab off, right? Remember. You can cut this guy off if you want to do 360 degrees. If you don't want 360 degrees, you still want to have that, you know, 90 degree spin, then leave that in, okay? So for those guys who want to have a fully spinning 360 degree, uh, you can buy servos that are already 360 degrees. So again, that's gonna give you that option to do this. So there is the ability to buy them um, pre-made and perfectly set up so let me know if you guys found that this was useful and if you want to find out more on how to do these kinds of things let me know and we'll create another video on how to do rc servos and rc electronics thanks guys any questions leave them and if you really like this kind of stuff please subscribe and hit that notification button so that you know that this is coming out um, and we can all learn because the RC hobby is an amazing hobby and we should all be learning on how to do this stuff ourselves. Cool. Thanks guys.